Hello and welcome to Bosch TV. So, the seasons are changing, it's getting colder. The leaves are changing colour and they'll soon be on the floor. Your clothing is going to be getting thicker, which means that your food will become a little bit warmer and a little bit heartier. Now, vegan food gets a bit of a bad rep when it comes to heartiness, so we thought we'd dispel this myth right now by giving you five wonderful recipes that will warm your cockles. They're really comforting, they're really delicious, they're really hearty, and they are perfect for this time of year. Let's get into it. The first recipe that we're going to pick is our wonderful ultimate vegan chili from this book here, Bosch. It's a good one, so let's crack on. This is an absolute revelation. If you've never made it before, you absolutely need to. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is warm one tablespoon of olive oil before adding some minced mushrooms to the pan. Get a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper in there and give it a good old stir. Stir it for around about five minutes and that way all the moisture that's in the mushrooms will dissipate away and you'll be left with a really meaty mince. Now we're gonna make the sauce. You're gonna get some olive oil and you're gonna get a little bit of red onion too. In fact, look, they're chopped quite neatly. A little bit of salt in that red onion will help it cook a little bit quicker and eke out all of that moisture. Look at it, it's quite nicely caramelized. Now we're gonna add some garlic cloves and coriander stalks and some red chilies all there together for a wonderful base flavor, truly aromatic and delicious. Then we're gonna get some red peppers and some celery, which will offer really nice color, really nice crunch, and obviously a lot in the way of health as well. Now it's time for some flavor. Oregano, we've got some chili powder, ground cumin, smoked paprika, ground cinnamon, and one bay leaf. Salt and black pepper will help all of those wonderful flavors to come together. And what you're gonna be left with is something that just smells amazing, looks incredible, and tastes delicious. Tomato puree is gonna add a nice body, nice tomatoey flavor, and obviously a rich color. Then some soy sauce, because it's got that salty note, and balsamic vinegar. Really nice trick for getting some sort of sharp sweetness inside your chili. So what we're trying to do here is just build flavor all the way from the bottom up. Now red wine will give the depth that this chili really requires. But obviously, you need a vegan red wine, so check barnivore.com to find a good one. Let it simmer for a little bit, and then add some chopped tomatoes. You're gonna have two tins, 400 grams. Mix that through all of those wonderful base flavors, and you can see there is a magnificent chili forming there. Now simmer it down because obviously all those flavors need to develop before you put in two types of beans, the black beans, the kidney beans, and those cooked mushrooms from earlier. A little bit of dark chocolate and then maple syrup just to sort of offset all of the sharpness of those tomatoes. Really delicious. Look at that. You wouldn't think it's vegan. Now pop the lid on, get it simmering for around about 10 minutes and what you're going to be left with is a wonderful pan full of chili. And then add the fresh coriander that was left over from the stalks earlier. Just fold that through, it's gonna add a really nice freshness and a flavor that just wasn't there previously. And look at that, this is a beautiful thing. I mean, Jesus, this is delicious. Now what we got here? A few tortilla chips, is it? Why not? Now there's your chili. You just sort of sprinkle that over the tortilla chips, then get some nice vegan cheese, pop that over the top, repeat the process, and what you're gonna be left with is a big bowl of big bad nachos. There it is. Guacamole obviously on top. The recipe for guac is on Bosch TV. Then you're gonna get some salsa, some tomatoes, some chilies, and then get some jalapenos on there for a little bit more extra spice. And if you've got any coriander left over, sprinkle that over as well. And what you're left with there is a wonderful bowl of food that will keep you happy, your mates happy, your mum happy, anyone who makes it is gonna be happy. I mean, and also, with the chili, you don't just have to have it with the big boy nachos, you can have it with rice or you can pop it in like a taco, or you can have it as a burrito. It's a delicious thing. Trust me, we really, really enjoy that every time we make it, and we do make it all the time. Now, that was the chili. The next one of these fantastically comforting recipes is from this book, Bish Bash Bosh. And I must say that this recipe right here is one of my personal faves. It's the ultimate shepherd's pie, and it is not to be missed. Let's crack on with the video. Oh my goodness. Anything with potato, and I just like it. First up, what you're gonna do is get some sun-dried tomato oil into the pan, and then you're gonna get your red onions in there. Stir them around nice and slowly for around about four to five minutes until they're caramelized. Then it's flavor time. 
thyme, rosemary, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic cloves, all those things together. Really fantastic flavors, really good for the base of this dish. Then we're gonna add some carrot in there and some celery for color, crunch, and flavor. Oh, and obviously nutrition. Once that's sort of simmered down a little bit, a big bowl of minced mushrooms. Yes, really, really great technique there. You just get some cheap mushrooms, you whack them in a blender, whiz them up, and look what happens. Tomato puree, amazing. Yeast extract, absolutely essential. And then balsamic vinegar, again, for that really nice sharp note. Oh my goodness me, I can just smell this right now. I want it right now, it's amazing. Poi lentils are obviously fantastically good for you and red wine is great for flavor again. So make sure you get a vegan one, check barnivore.com for that. And then some vegetable stock will help everything just sim simmer. And look at that, stir it around. It looks really, really meaty. And you know that the flavors in there are just next level. Now it's time to make some mashed potato. Get your potatoes in a pan, cover it over with cold water, and then add a little bit of salt in so it seasons the potatoes all the way through. Then simmer it up to a boil, and once it's boiling, boil it for around about 10 to 12 minutes. Drain off the water, add some unsweetened plant-based milk, some dairy-free butter, some Dijon mustard, and then season again with a little bit of salt. Once you've got all those elements in the pan together, give it a good old mash. Those flavors are going to be amazing. I mean, mashed potato is good on its own, but when you've got that other bits and bobs in there, amazing. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to put that potato in a piping bag before we put the mince inside the casserole dish. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. It is thick, it's rich, it's moist, um, it's delicious, it's got so much flavor in there, and you just know that that, as a baseline, is going to be delicious. Now, you don't need to use a piping bag, but if you do, this happens. Look at how cool they look. They're like little walnuts, little sort of iced gems, and it just makes the whole dish go from, yeah, this is pretty good, to, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Now, you can serve it with a, some steamed greens or some spinach or some collard greens or something like that, but, you know, I am always willing to give peace a chance, and that's exactly what we've done here. Oh my goodness, it's simple, it's hearty, it's homely, it's really comforting, it's the perfect thing for this cold weather, and it's one of the best shepherd's pie recipes you are going to get your hands on. So, we've gone from shepherd's pie, and now we're gonna to go to a recipe that came out of this book, Healthy Vegan, and it's Hearty Herby Stew. Now, healthy vegan food, you just don't assume that it's going to be all of that hearty, but just look at that. That looks super hearty, and do you know what? It is. You need a little bit of olive oil, then you're gonna get some shallots, and a little bit of celery, and some carrots, and then a teeny tiny little pinch of salt just to draw all the moisture out of those elements, and you're gonna cook that down for about three to four minutes. Then a garlic clove, because garlic is just really delicious, and it just makes everything tastes good. Then you're gonna add some rosemary, and you're gonna add some thyme, and you're gonna stir it all together, and at this point your kitchen's gonna smell amazing. Then a splash of white wine will just help rehydrate the pan a little bit, and before you add the vegetable stock, which is right there. Then a little bit of water as well, because what we're trying to do here is make a soupy stew. Dijon mustard goes an awful long way here as well, and the bay leaf for just general earthiness. It's such a wonderful little thing to pop in a dish like this. New potatoes are great here, and the reason why they're great is because they're smaller and they cook quicker, and you're gonna cook them for around about 12 to 15 minutes. They're gonna take on all that flavor before you add one tin of green lentils, cannellini beans, and the juice of the lemon, which is absolutely essential here for acidity. Now that looks good, but it's about to look a whole bunch better. Yeast extract is gonna give it a really nice umami note. Then you've got the sage, you've got the cavolo nero, and the parsley, all of those things together. I mean, this is healthy food, it's hearty food, it's delicious food, it's exactly the sort of thing that you want at this time of year, at any time of year that's kind of nippy. Taste it, season it with a little bit of salt, season it with a little bit of pepper. If you're going crazy, put some chili flakes in there too. But goodness me, this, is, is it a stew? Is it a soup? I'm not overly sure, but you know what? It is going to warm your cockles, and this is what this video is about, this is what this recipe is about, this is what we are all about at this time of year. Now, if you pop that in front of your family, you can guarantee that they're gonna be getting enough nutrients into their bodies. It's gonna leave them feeling fit and healthy and just generally really, really good. 
Nutritional yeast, or as we like to call it, nooch, has a really nice cheesy note, and when you sprinkle it all over the top of something like this, it's perfect. Parsley is a great little herb. It gives it so much flavor. Look at that, come on. Hearty herby stew from Healthy Vegan is a complete bona fide win. I'm very, very pleased with that recipe, and if you make it, you will be pleased too. Now, we've gone from one stew to another, but this stew is from this book, and it is goulash and dumplings. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? Those dumplings, oh, look at the way they swell. It's amazing, I love this recipe. It's so delicious, it's perfect for this time of year. Honestly, super, super healthy, super, super quick, and obviously, mentally delicious. We've got some parsley, plain flour, salt, baking powder, all in the bowl together, and you can mix it through. Then once you've done that, a bit of plant-based milk, some light olive oil, and then what you're gonna do is pop some Dijon mustard in there as well. Then you're gonna give it a nice mix and look at the dough that forms. It's not too sticky, it's not too wet, it's just kind of perfect. And now, basically, you wanna sort of make about 16 balls. They're all roughly an inch big. And you pop them on a plate and then you leave them for later because now what we're gonna do is make the goulash. Chopped tomatoes go in first, followed by vegetable stock, which will make it nice and soupy. Then castor sugar, bay leaves, and red chili, along with some smoked paprika, will give a wonderful smoky flavor and also a really nice herby note because of those bay leaves. Then you're gonna simmer that down. Simmer that sauce down so it just kind of thickens and the flavors all get nicely married to one another. It's amazing. Light olive oil in the next pan with a little bit of onion that's been really finely sliced. A carrot because they are incredibly healthy. Salt because you need to eke out the moisture from that onion. And it's gonna give it a nice mix. Look at it, it just looks good. A red pepper, two of them, because they have really nice crunch. They've got really nice flavor, and they just work perfectly with this kind of dish. Garlic cloves are very important here, as are caraway seeds. So make sure you get those, and make sure you stir them through all of those carrots, those peppers, and those onions. And then you're gonna bring that tomato sauce back, and you're gonna pour it in the pan. So yes, there's two pans, but don't worry, because it'll be worth it, because it's delicious. My goodness me, look at how thick it is, look at how unctuous it is, look at how wonderful it looks. It's simmering away and now we're gonna add some protein. Cannellini beans, drained, two tins of them, amazing. You could use another kind of beans if you so wished, but cannellini we really, really like. Now, here are the dumplings. And this is one of the greatest shots ever, wow. Look at the way they swell. That is just unbelievable. That's the baking powder doing its work. And now it's time to serve up. Get some dumplings, get some goulash, and pop it in the bowl, along with some salad. We've just used a really basic spinach there, but you don't have to use spinach. You could use rocket, or you could use kale. And then a bit of dairy-free yogurt will give a nice kind of cooling element to the whole dish. Some pepper to bring everything out. Then you've got some parsley and some lemon juice. Now that lemon juice is very important because that citrusy sort of nice acidic tang is just perfect for here. Oh my goodness gracious, look at them. They're so fluffy and voluptuous and just very, very eatable, which is exactly what this kind of food needs to be. At this time of year when it's cold and the rain is here and the leaves are falling off and you've got a big woolly jumper on, this is exactly the kind of meal that you want to warm your cockles. My goodness me, that was a good one, but I think we have left the best until last. Why? Well, this one is a web exclusive, and it is our wonderful burger bolognese. Sim Simmer, look at that. Oh my goodness gracious me. That's vegan parmesan, ops. And that pasta is just being coated in one of the single most beautiful sauces you are ever likely to expose your taste buds to. Olive oil and sun-dried tomato oil is what you need as the base of this dish. Then you're gonna get some red onions, which have been really finely chopped. A little bit of salt, again, to eke out all the moisture from the onions. I'm sure you know that by now. And after that's caramelized for about three to four minutes, we're gonna add some garlic, we're gonna add some basil stalks, and we're gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes, which will give the whole dish a really wonderful base flavor. Now, check these out. Vegan burgers. Yeah, you get the best vegan burgers you can get your hands on, but with the amount of flavor that's going on here, you don't need to get the most expensive. Brown that off for about three to four minutes before adding some red wine. Now, red wine is gonna be really, really important here for depth 
and body and just general familiarity when it comes to a beef bolognese. Let that simmer down for a while before adding in the tomato puree. Tomato puree is really good for thickness, it's really good for flavour, and the tin cherry tomatoes and bay leaf that we've just added in are going to be wonderful too. Oh my days, look at how thick and wonderful that sauce is. Now a little bit of pasta water from the pot of pasta that you've got bubbling on the side will help the silkiness of the dish come together and also it will help bind onto the pasta. You obviously have to season to taste salt and a bit of black pepper, but if you wanted to you could probably put some chili flakes in here too. And look at that sauce, it's just simmering away. Get rid of that bay leaf because you don't need it. And then get your cooked spaghetti that's just come fresh out of the pan. And then just sort of twist it around with your tongs. You could use a spoon here, but do you know what? Tongs are always a really good thing to use. Give it a little twizzle, give it a little twist, pop it into a bowl along with some rocket. And then once you've got that there, it's time to start dressing it up a little bit. You can get some dairy-free cheese and just grate it over the top. You can also get some black pepper like we're doing right here. Or, like I like to use, vegan parmesan, which is very, very good now. And then some basil. Why? Because basil is a fantastic herb that goes beautifully with tomatoes. And look at it. It's thick, it's unctuous, that spaghetti's taken all that wonderful flavour perfectly. Give it a little twizzle with your fork. And that is five wonderfully comforting dishes which is going to see you right at this time of year. I thoroughly enjoyed showing you those videos and I thoroughly hope that you thoroughly enjoyed watching them. Guys, as ever, it has been an absolute pleasure. Do keep your eyes on Bosch TV for loads more plant-based recipes which come in your way real soon and we shall see you again before too long. See you later.